to Downtime in the Apocalypse, a podcast where Ted talks and Kevin listens. Now, listeners, Happy New Year's. Yeah, Happy New Year's. Okay. Or to those Christian cucks out there, April Fool's Day. (laughs) That's right. It's April 1st, and for some reason, we decided that rather than using, well, originally, you know, the fucking equinox. Yeah. You know, an actual solar event to mark our years. We plugged it to a semi-reasonable calendar and then screwed it all up by applying, you know, freaking lunar calendar holidays to it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't get confusing with leap years at all either, Ted. No. No. So, um, besides your rants about <laughs> how the calendar works... Oh, do you want me to go into a full rant? I can go on a full rant. We can talk about how the Greeks let, did it, the Egyptians did it, and let, the Romans did it. Let's go into that next time, because... <laughs> the Egyptians did it very good, and the only reason the Roman calendar was better is because Caesar hired a bunch of them to make it better. And here we are. But Yes, by the way, uh, a calendar, it should be... Look, there's 365 days. Yeah. Okay, so here's what you do. Ten months, three... Uh, uh, 36 days each. Okay. Five holy days at the end. Okay. Five holy days at, like, the end of the... the year. And then you can okay. add six with the early the two years. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. No, just then just have, like, festival week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I... I okay, I can see that. Because then you don't have to make stupid half rhymes to figure out how many days are in the months. <laughs> Actually, tell you what, we'll just figure this out. Kevin, right now, why does February have less days? Uh, why does February have less days? Yes, than every other month. Uh, because it's Black History Month? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because fucking Italian thought it was unlucky. Oh, uh, well. Ah, uh, thank you, Italy. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. So anyways, now that we've offended so many people. Yeah, I, mean, I could say like good, what, two-thirds of the earth? I don't know. Yeah, got to be around there. I think so, yeah. But whatever. Uh, let's see, what can we do to add to that total? Um, you know who I hate? Hungarians. Yeah, they're always hungry. Boo. <laughs> and any Turk, a Turkish guy who supports the president... Uh, <laughs> uh, crap, who else don't I like? Uh, let's not get into this too far, Ted, we, before we say something you regret. I don't, I'm not going to regret any of this. Okay, fine. Well, let's do one more then. Fine. Uh, let's see. Walloons. What is that? People from Wallonia. Where is that? The south of Belgium. Yeah, screw you, Walloons. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump on this. Why not? Yeah. All right. Actually, so I, there's another podcast that I listen to called System Mastery. Yeah. Which you have not listened to, and if you did, you'd be like, huh, I didn't mean to copy their formula. Uh, well, <laughs> well, here we are. Unfortunately, the biggest nerd you list, uh, you know also is a big Palladium book dork. Yeah, that's, yeah, um, yeah. So, But one of them has Belgian ancestry. Oh, and, okay. And uh, they're making fun of that at one point, and it's like, oh, yeah, but, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like, like, it's like, whatever they speak there, it's like, yeah, fuck you guys. I don't. I know none of you know how to speak Walloon, and I'm. I was listening to this in Wallonia. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's not a language, you asshole. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I am in Liège right now. <laughs> that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. All right. So what time it came up? So so Ted, um, last time we recorded and uh, to right now there has not been much of a week. No, it's been about three hours. Yeah. So. Yeah, literally, yes. Um, so let's talk about the uh, movie that uh, you made me watch for April Fool's Day. Right, so I get all the festival movie days. Yes. I've offered to let Kevin pick out RPGs as recompense, but he has so far declined. I, I don't know what to pair this with, other yeah. than Uno. Oh, I know exactly what I pair this <laughs> with. Um, but yes, we watch Uno, the movie. Yes. Now, if you have ever seen the wonder that is Clue. Yes. It's not quite that good. No, I I would say it uh it it aspires to be that yeah. good. 
Now, if you've seen the movie Battleship, it's way better than that. You know what? Yeah, I'll agree with that wholeheartedly. There was a lot more going on in this than Battleship. Visual effects style. Uh, they had sculptors on this. They had uh, so many different rigs. According to the uh, carpenters. Yeah, according to the credits, there was a legion of carpenters. Yeah, there was a, there was a whole uh, platoon of carpenters, really. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I appreciate what they did with uh, Wood in this uh, Uno movie. So, if you're not familiar with Uno the movie, what's wrong with you? Uh, it is possibly Thanks, the... You've watched it. Um, <laughs> it is possibly the best thing the Achievement Hunter team has ever made. Yeah. And you, you're speaking of even, like, Ruby and also, like, all those other shows that they've done? Yes. Okay. Good. It was... For the longest time, the only movie that had 100, or sorry, a 10 out of 10 in IMBD. IMDB. BD, isn't it? International Movie Database. Oh, that's what that stands for. Yes. Yeah, whatever that is. Um, it's now only 9.5. Well, I mean, there, there has to be some critics out there, right? Right. I'm, I'm going to look up what the second highest movie is right now. <laughs> um, Let's think. Uh, what what do you think it would be? Like, do you think it'd be like a real movie or is it another Uno movie? Uh, I'm I'm looking it up right now. Um, nine point two Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, so this is better than Shawshank Redemption, according to a lot uh, of people. Nine point one The Godfather. Also better than The Godfather. Nine point zero Godfather Part Two. Oh, okay. Nine point yeah. zero The Dark Knight. Mm, okay. I'm just going to go through the top 10. 8.9, 12 Angry Men. Okay. 8.9, Schindler's List. Ooh. All right. 8.9, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, 8.8, Pulp Fiction. Mm. Uh, 8.8, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Right. Um, I might have to go a bit farther because I just saw them up to number 12. Yep. Um, 10 is, out of 8.8, .8, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Okay, right, of course. 11, at 8.8, .8, Fight Club. Ah. And right below it, same rating, Forrest Gump. Mmm. <laughs> so, uh, I, I gotta say, uh, Ted, all, all those movies uh, do pale in comparison to this one, for obvious reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. So, first off, all those were scripted. Yes. And all of them were intentionally movies. Yes. Uno the movie has most of the Achievement Hunter people you know at the time, 2016 to be precise. Yeah. Most of the popular ones, Most at least. of the popular ones. And apparently they were going to play rather boring games that night, from the sounds of it. They yeah. The plan was to play some Uno and then Trivial Pursuit. Right. Like the classic kind of like board games that you would play as a child, basically. Yeah, or if you're just a boring human. Yeah, well, that too, yeah. With that being said, they decided to turn on all the optional rules. Yes. Now, these optional rules do include certain things like... Sevens. If you play a seven after you play it and it resolves... Yes. If you didn't win the game, you pick a person and swap hands with them. Yep. There's, you, also, uh, there's also the zero. If you play a zero... Everyone moves their hand to whatever direction you happen to be going that time. Yes. Just once to that side, yes. Now, you may be going, well, yeah, it's Uno. It takes forever. It's frustrating. And the only redeeming factor it has is the simplicity, which you're already ruined with even more extra rules. Yeah. What could... <laughs> Pretty standard for a live stream. What could possibly go wrong? Well, they decided that... No, they weren't going to play one round of Uno. They were going to play it like Rummy 500. We have to reach 500 points. Yes. And no. how, how you get points in this is whenever you're out of cards, they count, the computer counts up all the card values in your opponent's hands, and that's how many points you get. I don't know how many you get for like the plus four and skip turns and such. I think that's like plus 10 points. Yeah, or they something. said something like that. They, yeah. they were worth a lot. And you also get, like, a match uh, win at the end. So yeah. it's not just purely that. It's also you get a certain amount of, like, I think 100 points just for beating other people. Yeah. Now, four people, and they set the winning number at 500.
hundred. Mm. So you can imagine where this uh, the problem lays here. It took about two hours and forty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Now there are some excellent and quotable lines. Hey, right back at you. Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> ah, cunt. Um, um, yeah, there's a lot of good lines in this, as well as like, oh, I peed myself. Like, uh, there, there's a lot of good lines. Let this end. Yeah, there's a lot of begging going on with this. You just gave me a, a bowl of piss. I I'm stuck my... with the ocean. When I come back home, that cat's going to be fully grown. We learn a lot about their personal lives in this yeah, one. Yeah, about their loved ones and, you know, how... Uh, this is sort of like a uh, uh, a ancient Greek kind of like hell uh, where someone has to push a rock up forever, but this is just four men playing Uno till the end of time. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, I mean, um, to, to go off uh, with the start here, there is like uh, four starting characters that, that made an appearance in this film. Only three of them stick around to the end. No, I don't remember any of their names other than Gavin. But um, Jeff, Gavin... Um, I think the other one is Jack, who subbed in. Yeah, this, yeah. The there was only one real winner was the guy who left early. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, I think his name was Ryan, if I recall correctly. Let me see if we can find the cast. Yeah, I I think it would be easily find it enough. I guess like um. So yes, I, I actually have it right now. So, um, how do you spell that? Geoffrey. Um, it's like G E O F F. Yeah. Joffrey Ramsey, Gavin Free. Yeah. Um, Ryan Haywood. Yeah. Jeremy Gooley. Yes. And Jack Patillo. Yes. And those are those are your uh, five uh, main leads there. Yes. Uh, now, would you like to read uh, some trivia or user reviews? I'll uh, I'll listen to some trivia. Okay. Did you know Ryan's last play of the game before he leaves? Is to use a wild draw four card yep. on Joffrey and change the card to yellow. He had changed the had he changed the color to green, Gavin would have won with five hundred points and the movie would have ended an hour and a half earlier, effectively cutting the length in half. So, um, Ted, you know what that is? What? That's sort of the um <laughs> that's sort of like the uh the shotgun you kinda like leave at the top of the shelf right there, and that's you know goes off at the wrong time and then we're stuck here for another hour so yeah I, that's good uh, that's good character development right there i like that that's why ryan is the ultimate villain and the true villain of this story <laughs> not the game of uno let's see um who the movie began on the night of the 2016 united states election and uh they actually got the um president uh, right in that they yeah they did they did guess that correctly. <laughs> some some would say this is a foreshadowing. Yeah. Uno the movie is a um sequ- a direct sequel to the independent short film Let's Play Uno. <laughs> How long is that Let's Play? Uh only marginally shorter, I think. Oh really? Okay. All right, gotcha. Wow. Uh it currently is the third longest production ever released by Achievement Hunter. Hmm. They did a uh, 50 turn Mario Party 8 game and a 50 turn Mario Party 5 game that somehow ended up being longer. Wow. You know, um, Ted, that actually might be something in the future for maybe another April Fool's. Who knows? <laughs> um, or Labor Day. Ooh, <laughs> Joffrey Ramsey went from wanting to play Uno weekly in the beginning to say never again over the course of filming. As I said, character development. Uh, it is one of the very few films uh, filmed entirely in a one take using a multi-camera setup. Wow. Wow. Yeah, all right. All right. Take that bird, man. It says here's looking at you, kid, more than in Casablanca. <laughs> Let's do one more piece of trivia. Okay, I'll find a good one then. Okay, okay. You keep on looking then. But um, so another uh, another big thing with this uh, film, uh, quote, unquote, um, it's it's got a lot of uh it's got a lot of emotions going for it. Um first off is like uh you know, relative joy just playing the game of Uno. 
and then uh, after that, quickly descends into just hatred and vitriol for your common man. Got one. Okay. The production of Uno the movie left lasting psychological effects in the cast due to the extreme method acting and dedication to character. Ryan Haywood, who portrayed the character B.M. A Vagabond, suffered from a mental breakdown in the middle of filming where he allegedly went off script me and yelling, all the pretty things are broken. Oh, I do remember that. Wow. All Haywood right. later left production likely to cover from mental trauma with his wife and two kids claiming he had family responsibilities. And see, that's dedication to the craft right there. Gotta appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie. You you could just get ninety percent of the effect of this without watching any of it. Yeah. Us talking about it right now pretty much sums it up. I don't know. I feel like we're not getting the proper amount of emotion in this. Okay, Kevin, let's do something super frustrating okay. for several hours. Um, so I'm thinking we play Monopoly, but not by the actual rules by the rules people play with oh the keep the game going on for longer yeah because people for some reason don't realize that it says if you refuse to buy a property it goes to auction immediately yeah. and no nothing goes on free parking yeah stop putting extra money there yeah yeah keep the game running more and the economy keep going on yeah yeah no I, I i see what you're saying ted i see what you're saying or uh what else could we do that has an equal psychological effect um hmm. okay Dark Souls, but I grab the right side of the controller and you grab the, the left. left side. Okay, and then we have to we have to co op control the character. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. I like I'll that. Make a Dark Souls two. That'll be easier. Yeah, but way less fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's also that. All right. Yeah. Uh, what else could we do? Uh, Mario Party no volume. <laughs> no, no volume, and also uh, no. Um... <laughs> Like 90 turns, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to just think of other awful board games you could do. Um, You could also just do uh, Sellers of Catan, but you can't trade. I'm used to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> My friends refuse to trade with me whenever I play. Otherwise... That makes the game so much longer. <laughs> yeah, but I just win if they don't. I'm far too good at Catan. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um, Man, I'm trying to think. Uh... Oh, um... Who cards against humanity every day for six months. Oh, God, that would kill me as a person. That would just kill me. I've basically done that a few times. It's mm -hmm. not fun. Yeah, you can imagine. But it's just basically a documentary watching four and a half, five, I guess. Five, yeah, four and a half of breakdowns, I guess. Yeah. Slowly going into insanity. And... Literally, at the end, they stop actually playing to win and just try to get one of them to win. Yeah, um, and that person that attend actually is the uh, instigator of this whole entire thing to get to 500 points. They try to get Gavin to win. Yes, now, apparently there was actually about 45 minutes of discussion of this. Ah, uh, yes, beforehand, like, uh, well, we probably shouldn't do, like, 500 points. Let's just do, like, 200 or something. Yeah. But, at least according to the trivia, they forgot to record that. It was originally going to be a bit longer. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying there could have been it, a director's cut? It could have cut. been three hours and 20 minutes. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, I'm kind of sad we got the shorter version, really. I know, right? <laughs> now, they do have their own credit sequence with a song. Oh, yeah, it's a great song. Yes. Uh, oh, this goes with the theme of us liking the song more than liking yes, the movie. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Where even they are confused about the people in the credits. Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's Cosa Risa? There's someone who left the company in there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Snuck his way back in. Um, oh, man. So, so Ted, let, let me ask you a, a pretty serious question here. Yes. Okay. Um, so, out of, uh, let's say, 19 Uno cards that I forced you to take. Um, Which I think is the highest amount in, like, a turn for drawing. Yes. Um, what would you uh, rate this uh, movie? Obviously, 23. 23 out of 19? Kevin, the only reason we're not watching this again right now is that you said no. And also, we have to play a game in a little bit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We, we could just have them watch it, too. My, uh, here, Here's how that would go. Let me let me tell you how that would go really quickly. Um, Justin would leave. Adam would stay for at least two minutes and then leave. 
And then we, it would just be you and me sitting there again, watching the whole Uno movie because I'm insane and because you are more insane. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here's what I would give it. <laughs> and I don't want to sound controversial here, Ted, to you, but uh, I'm going to go with a, a solid, but I would think fair 15 out of 19 Uno cards. That is way better than I expected. I want that you fell asleep during it. Yeah, well, okay. So here, here's my thing. It helped me sleep for a little bit, so I'm a little bit more uh, lenient towards it. That's fair. <laughs> so it was going to be a 10, but here we are. Bump it up by five. It's still better than I thought you'd give it. I know. I kind of like this stuff anyway. I like Let's Play, so. Yeah, so I normally don't, actually. Mm, yeah. Like, I, we, uh, last week, uh, last episode, we talked about how we were, on a, we were on a stream. Yes, yes. And I still have no idea how anyone watches that crap. <laughs> Um, to, to be fair to that, it's more interactive than just like a Let's Play would be. Oh, yeah, I'm totally aware, but... You could play Jackbox with us. Yeah, that that is the reason. Yeah, so, uh, there is that. Uh, yeah, I guess that is the difference between the two. Yeah, I mean, if we could literally throw in like a skip card and skip Jeff like six more times, I would love to watch this again. We should do this with them. <laughs> Oh, you're saying like the yes. oh, oh, that would be. I like that idea a lot. They have an Xbox, so yeah, we, could well, I, we should do this. Oh, wow, that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> we'll set aside four hours. Yeah, and then just go for it. Okay, you know what, Ted? I like this a lot. Yes, let's definitely let's run this by them and see how they like that there. Yeah, I, so this would be like a fan production. Yeah, is there it, a term for that? Um, I I don't know. Uh, uh, no, like I guess maybe like a a fan film or like a yeah. So there's a Star Trek one of these called "Of Gods and Men." Okay, right. But it actually has a few of the actors from the original series in it. Oh, so and it's like very like very quick, clearly, fans wrote it right that cared about the material, knew their shit, yeah, and could write. Yeah, so. Let's, like, yeah, like, I guess... An homage? I mean, yeah, or, yeah, like... Uh, unofficial spinoff? Unofficial spinoff is, I think, the best kind of term for it. So, we'll do an unofficial spinoff. <laughs> yes, we'll do Uno, the film. Um, How about, uh, maybe not, maybe not that. Maybe, uh... A livid production. Uh, okay. Or, what's, uh, what's that uh, term from uh, Palladium? The Megaverse? Yeah, Uno. <laughs> Uno, Uno. <laughs> one story in the megaverse. Well, I, I like putting Uno and megaverse in there. I, yeah, I just have to think about how to make that like organically kind of sound better. But yeah, I let, let, we'll, we'll uh, brainstorm that. Calling Uno in the megaverse. <laughs> <laughs> I we'll we'll get on it. We'll work on it. But um, thank you everybody for uh, listening to uh, the April Fools episode. This is going to be 20 minutes that I just made Kevin sit through three hours of a movie. So, so here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, this is a movie Ted has already seen so many other times. So, How many times have I seen this movie before today? Um. Well, does you sleeping to it count? I have never slept this long. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say two times. Sorry, just once. I was going low end and then like that even lower here. All right, fine. Yeah, no, I saw this once before, about a week after it came out, actually. Oh wow! So yeah, you were right on the ground floor of that. Yeah, I was very. I was basically told you need to watch Udo the movie. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, that was like the week after the election. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you everybody for listening. Uh, we'll catch you all next time and. I'm just glad the intro song is not longer than the uh, podcast. So, Oh, yeah, this will make it about 30 minutes if we're lucky. If we're very, very lucky. Um, we could do a thing where we just sing uh, the credits at the end like they did, but I don't think I want to do that. This episode is made by Ted and Kevin, and, of course, the edited by Jerry. Music by Universe Number 1. 22 and of course our best boy stew da dong uh thank you ted You're uh, welcome. <laughs> i was not expecting that to go so well me either but
but you you pulled it off there. You you scat it. Yeah, yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.